What's up guys, it's Tetris from Tetris Workshop and in this video we're going to be making a bennet head screw for our string through saddle. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, especially this guy right here. And all this thing allows us to do is it allows the string to go through this screw, I don't know if you can see the hole there or not, to go through the screw, come out and go over this roller right here. Now if you don't want to build one of these guys, um, I sell these on my on eBay and also sell, I'm going to be selling them on my website very soon. Um, if you want to go buy one of these instead of having to try to make one. But if you want to make one, I'm going to show you how to do it. Not hard to do, but you do need a few tools. One being, you definitely need or know somebody that has a lathe. Um, I've got the little mini lathe that I got for Christmas that I'm absolutely falling in love with. And I'm <laughs> saving my money to buy a bigger one now type thing. But I really enjoy it a lot. I enjoy messing with that thing a lot. So a lathe is definitely important. Either get one, have one, or know somebody that does have one. The next thing you'll definitely need is some of these centering bits. Um, I bought these from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to go check them out uh, if you want to buy some too. Um, I can't remember the exact price on them, but um, like I said, I'll put it in the description. And then you also need a very small drill bit. I'm using a 1 16th inch bit. Got it from Lowe's, but I also link one in the description if you want to go buy one from Amazon um, if you don't have a Lowe's or a Home Depot in your area. Now, as far as the saddle goes, I buy these unbranded saddles. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on eBay. Um, uh, they're relatively cheap. I'll put a link down there um, uh, where you can check those out too. The other thing is this little screw here. This is the actual screw that I use here. Um, I got these from McMaster Car. Uh, this is before we turn it to bent head screw, and this is after we put this put the hole in the middle of it there. Um, I bought the first ones that I tried from Lowe's for, I think they were about $2 for a three pack of them or something like that. So if you're only wanting to build one of these guys, then that's probably all you need. But uh, you can go there and get one or um, you can go to Amazon. I'm sure they've got them too. I bought these from McMaster Car. Uh, but the only thing with there is, is you're pretty much paying the same amount for the shipping as you are for the box of screws that you're getting. So um, unless you're wanting to make a hundred of these things like I try to, um, you might not want to uh, buy from there. Now the reason for this modification is, is because it keeps us from having to uh, cut out the back of our bridge. Really from having to modify our bridge in any, in any way except for uh, making the hole a little bit bigger for the screw to go through. Um, as you can tell here, the screw that's in the saddle originally is pretty small as compared to this one. And it's not a lot bigger, but it is bigger. The spring that comes with it still fits around it, so that's a good thing. I've also tried to not use a roller saddle. Uh, the first time I attempted it, I used a just a regular saddle. And uh, the problem I was having was the string was wearing a groove into the saddle, which eventually snapped the string or it um, threw the intonation off on the guitar. So I just was having trouble with that, so I decided to use the roller saddles. And that's what I came across here. Now one other tool you'll need uh, along with this is, is the uh, tap. You'll need a 6 seconds tap for the screw to tap this saddle out when you get when you get done with it um, but that's pretty simple uh, you don't even have to drill this thing out you just basically run a run a tap right into it and it works great also too you can buy these bennet head screws from uh, uh, different places on the on the web the only problem is is a lot of them don't have uh, ones that are very long and if you do get some that are long they're pretty expensive um, whereas like maybe five of these screws might run you uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly but they're they're kind of relatively expensive um, the longer the screws get on a lot of your places you buy them the bigger diameter they get which is not what we need we don't need a we need a longer screw but we don't need a bigger diameter screw that's where we run into issues with this guy here um, this screw is a 630 seconds and it is three quarter inches long so it's um it's good enough it's the exact same length as the ones that come in the saddle maybe actually be a little bit longer well all right guys that's about it for the information on this guy now let's go out here and um, we're going to go over the lathe and i'm going to show you how to actually um drill this guy out very easy to do it's not hard but um like i said you do need a lathe to make this work but guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you do give me a like if you like it please subscribe thanks for watching guys Okay, so here we are at the lathe. And like I said, this is a pretty, very easy process. Um, the one thing I do want to tell you guys, though, is that anytime you buy something from me, um, um, it goes to um, back into this uh, YouTube channel and to help me produce more videos and things like that. Um, most all the stuff that I've, uh, all the B-Bender kits that I've sold, 
I've used to purchase um, this camera that you're seeing me on, uh, some of the uh, lighting, uh, all kinds of stuff. Just about every bit of it goes back into it. Every now and again, I might buy a, a cup of coffee or something um, with that money. But anyways, guys, I just really appreciate all your support. And like I said, if you do buy one of these saddles from me, um, it does go directly to my shop and um, to help me make these videos. Without further ado, um, first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to make sure we got our safety glasses on. Uh, I don't like running this thing without any kind of safety glasses. Now I'm trying to do this while I'm hugging a camera here, but um, I'm going to try to make this um, where y'all can see it as good as possible. Now this is the uh, one that I've already done here. Now you can see, I hope you can see it better now maybe. But uh, there's that. So we're going to get another screw. This is the one from uh, inside that I was showing you. And we're just going to chuck it up here. So as you can t tell there, we're in, we're in there. Let me pull this thing down and see if you can still, yeah, you can still see it. I'm going to move the camera this way just a little bit. Okay, now so maybe I think you can see it better. So let's cut it on and see what it looks like here. There we go. Okay, so here's the centering bit I'm using. And it says it's a number one centering bit. You probably can't see it on there, but that's what it says. So what we're going to do is we're going to chuck it up in our tail chuck here. This is probably the most important uh, tool to use uh, with this because without this centering bit, it doesn't turn out good. Um, even though this lathe is supposed to be precision, precision lathe, it's still not. This tail chuck is not 100% in center with this uh, main chuck right here. So we have to use this center bit. The center bit lines it all up though and makes it work out great. So I want to get that as close as I can to that there. A little bit of lube. You don't have to use a whole lot with uh, brass, but any bit helps. So here we go. I'm just going to cut this guy on. I usually bear it up to the shoulder that you see there. Pretty simple. Now, next process, we're using this 16th inch drill bit. The thing I like about these smaller drill bits though uh, is that even if you chuck them up tight, they're not 100% uh, snug. So if this thing ever binds up, the bit will actually spin and keeps you from breaking a bit. That's not to say that I haven't broken a bit already, because I have, but uh, there's that. If any of you guys are wondering, um, this is the Grizzly G0745 lathe. Um, I got this for Christmas. I've had it for about two months now. Uh, I love it. Um, I had a couple uh, subscribers ask about um, the precision of it. And like I said, it's not 100% the most precise machine out there. But um, it does this well. And um, one of them was asking about building rings with it. Um, I don't have any tooling that I can actually do the center but I might get some and see if we can maybe make something with it. I think it'd be a pretty pretty neat project to try to do on the lathe. But as far as getting started with a lathe, this mini lathe has been um I love it. I buy I just buy stuff just to make crap with it but um I really enjoy it a lot. So anyways without uh I'm gonna shut up now and we're gonna finish this thing. I'm just gonna put a little bit of lube here. Now you'll notice this thing when you first start it, it'll go in quick. Um once it gets kinda deep it starts uh a lot of the uh, material starts binding up on the uh, bit and you have to back it out and go in a lot. Uh, I usually run this, um, I want to say it's about right there. I don't run it as fast as I can because uh, when I do that, I just don't feel like it does as well. I'd be able to tell right here, you should, uh, when I put this bit in there, you should see it dip down. When it dips down, that's just showing you that this, uh, this, tail chuck isn't perfectly in line with this and that's why we use that centering bit so here we go so i go about right there with my rpms just you see it dip there if you can see it or not but without that centering bit uh, this thing would have just drilled into the chuck probably 
And you can listen to the bit once you hear it popping. Hear that? That's when I know I am. I need to back out. And if you notice, then when the the bit uh, when it when you heard it pop, the bit spun in the chuck. You see there? See how it, it spun? That's how I kind of know that I am close. Now I'm gonna put a little lube on this time. Let's go a this in there. the motor kind of hums a little bit different when it gets starts binding like that and all machines are probably different so getting close to the end here one thing about this lathe is if you get over uh, if you try to do I, the biggest I've done with this one uh, is a uh, inch and a quarter uh, screw and the problem is, is that the problem is, is that this doesn't go that far. So I have to stop, move this tail chuck into the screw, and start it, which is not good when you're trying to keep it lubed up. Did you see how it was spinning there when I was binding? So I'm talking about where the reason I like these smaller bits. I think they're pretty good. All right. I think we're almost through. Yep. There we're through. Okay. If you've got this same lathe and you want to do this, I'll run it. You can see the knob here. I'll run it right there so the second the back knob I'm about probably what would that be that would be I'm on about between two and three on this right here between two and three right here there we go okay now I'm going to back this guy back Yeah. Pull my screw out. And as you can see there, we've got a hold right through the center of it. Now what I like to do is is take a drill bit. Like this. Stick it in the tip there and just kind of deburr a little bit. Get, get that out of there. And there you go. There you have it. As far as this guy here goes, um, you just use a 632nd bit. And start her out in there and just thread it out. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to um, actually drill it. I was at first... But um, it's just as easy to do this. And this one has got a starter on it, which is probably is probably more ideal for what you're trying to do here. And you just start threading it in there. Like I said, you don't have to uh, drill this guy out. Now, once you get done with that, you pretty much got this guy here. Now, all you need is your spring. And then this guy here. 
go. You've got a string through a saddle. Very easy, very simple to do. And like I said before, with the um, the only really modification you have to do to the bridge now with one of these is um, make sure that uh, the hole is big enough for, to accept this six thirty second screw. And also, too, depending on you know if you buy if you buy a bead bender kit from me on the knob, I try to uh, get it to the right point to where it goes right into this saddle on a uh, stock bridge. But if it don't, you might have to ream it out to where this thing can float a little bit in the back to whatever string is, because you don't want the string to come in at a real hard angle, turn in this screw, and then turn again. Um, it just adds more, more than it needs to be. So you can drill that thing out, move it down or up to uh, the spot you need. But anyways, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, I'm going to sell these things on eBay. And um, I'm selling them on eBay right now. I'm going to put them on my website soon if you want to buy one. Um, if you are like me and you like to build things, and hopefully this video helped you out. And um, I really appreciate you watching. And uh, I really appreciate uh, if you would subscribe to my channel. Guys, I hope you liked the video. If you do, give me a like. If you liked it, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.